Hello, I'm Dr. David Hornbrook, the Clinical Director of Education Technology at Keating Dental Arts in Irvine, California. Today we're going to talk about, I think, one of the most important things and often not done by dentists in achieving optimal aesthetics. So Dale's our patient and we're going to do the four anterior teeth. Now with the trend going away from opaque or metal-based restorations, we really have to look at what are the influencing factors in developing the final shade. You know, with metal, or a PFM, or even some of the early zirconia, they were so opaque, the final shade was really only der derived from the porcelain itself. The fact that these are translucent and we're making them much thinner, there's three factors. One is the porcelain itself. So if this was our final restoration on Dale, this obviously has chroma, value, and hue. As we put it on the tooth, now other factors come into play. One of the factors is the shade of the preparation. You know, if this was going to be his final restoration, it's going to be very similar to this. The facial surface, this happens to be zirconia. The facial surface is about 0.7 millimeters thick. And with the translucency, if I held this up to the light, you'd be able to see right through it, which means the preparation underneath is going to influence our final shade. If we're going to use a lithium disilicate like Emacs or Empress, and sometimes we'll make those at 0.2 and 0.3 millimeters thin, is even more of a factor. So as a clinician, as an educator, and also as a consultant in the laboratory, I see this far too often when dentists do not give us the prep shade. Then we're just guessing. Then we really have to go to a material that's so opaque, so the preparation isn't influencing our final shade. So Iva Clark created what they call their natural dye material. It used to be called the stump guide. Some of you have been using this for years. Remember, it's called the stump. And they got away from that for a number of reasons. One is the shades of the original stump guide did not match the teeth very well. And second is I think I'd rather talk in front of my patient that I've got to take a shade of their prep than a shade of your stump. <laughs> All right, so this is the material. Now, you could use a shade guide for this, because we do get that occasion where people will say, oh, the preparation is, is C4. The problem with that is, in the laboratory, what we're doing is we're taking material that's designed to match these shades and kind of just guessing of what does that match on the Vita shade guide or the chromoso chromoscope or uh, another material shade guide. So let's go ahead and take our shade. So we just prepared the teeth. This is an Optergate from Iva Clar. Okay, so we have the Optergate in. Is, are you okay? Is it comfortable? Yeah, fine, okay, fine. good. So, root canal treated teeth, very, very dark stain per, from previous decay. So we're gonna go ahead and take our natural dye prep guide and our goal with this is to try to get as close as possible. They don't always match exactly, but it's really about value or the amount of grayness. Because when the ceramist knows the approximate value or shade of the preparation, then and how thin or thick the restoration is, then they can choose the appropriate ceramic to give us our desired shade and neutralize or utilize that underlying prep to get that final shade. So, Starts in ND, ND is natural dye, ND 1 to 9 being lightest to darkest or lowest in value. So as we look at number 7, or the right lateral, we're at about an ND 3. Now at this point, I like to take a photograph of this. So we're going to go ahead and use our macro lens. Close down a little bit for me. It's going to be a bright light. And we take our photo. Then the laboratory can see that as well, especially if there's going to be multiple shades within the same case. And they can see, oh, why? Wow, he's right, that is dark in there. Or with this banding, maybe they put a little stain to neutralize. In fact, that's a dark gray. Maybe they put a little bit of pink, which is a complementary color. So, seven and ten about an ND3. Now I like to take this, another important factor, I like to take the photo and the shade before I take my impressions. 
I also try to keep them as hydrated as possible. Because if we took our traditional impression, let's say it was a regular set or even fast set, three to six minutes, these can dehydrate so much that this that's an ND3 now could look like an ND1 with the dehydration. Then the laboratory would choose a different ceramic to neutralize the underlying prep, which would yield not the result I want, it would be a darker tooth. So, we're gonna go ahead and write that down, if you can remember that for me, Joanne. Sure. ND3. Now, this is kind of a tough one. Now, if for some reason it's between two shades, maybe it's not as yellow as one shade and not quite as gray as the other, you can say half of ND4, half of ND7. So as we look here, we've got a gingival third that is really about an ND8. And then we have an incisal. Again, the reason why we want to send the photo as well as the incisal versus gingival is they can incorporate different staining. In fact, we'll even stain the inside of the restoration. If you look at a restoration, an all ceramic, and this could be Emacs, this could be the new KDZ Aesthetic, which is our new translucent zirconia, we want as as much translucency above the dentin as possible. So we can either paint a neutralizer or something to block that out on the front, which will give us that flat artificial look, or what we do is we actually paint a very thin layer of a pacifier or neutralizer on the inside or the intaglio portion of the crown. Then as I put this to place, it'll neutralize that dark preparation, but we still have a lot of translucency on top of that. So we've got ND8 on the gingival third of both number eight and nine. And then the incisal is actually very bright as we see sometimes with these endodontically treated teeth. We're at an ND2. So we're gonna go ahead and photograph that again so they see that I'm not crazy. They'll say, why did David give me two shades for a single tooth? Turn toward me a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. You doing all right, Dale? Yeah. Okay. okay. <clears throat> all right, so we've got the preparation shades of the front four. Now, what does the lab do with this information? I mean, that's a key factor. Well, they have a material that's called natural dye material. Now, notice I, I actually wrote this on here. Wash hands before using or mixing, which is important whether you're a CAD CAM doc in your own office and you're mixing this up or if your laboratory is giving you these prep guides back or prep shades that maybe look a little grayer than they should. Even the oil or, oil or any debris on our fingers as we mix it, because what we're going to do is it's a putty-like material. They're actually going to take this, and it's a light cured material, they're going to take off. Now let's say I had them mix ND4 with ND7, and then they've got to put them together. So, okay. So again, this would typically be done in a laboratory unless you're doing CAD CAM in your own office. We're going to go ahead and adapt this flexible, it's basically like a flexible resin, it's light cured. Then we will take this little plastic stick. Some labs use metal. We use a plastic stick that comes with the kit from Ivaclar. Embed it in the crown. And then we're going to go ahead and light cure this. Now, do all labs do this? No. Should they? Absolutely. But they can't do it unless you give them a prep shade. So in a new relationship, of course, Keating will be doing this for you, but in a new relationship with a laboratory, I would make sure you give them the prep shade and tell them you want these prep dyes returned to you. So as I light cure that, and the reason I like them returned is I can then check and try it in on cementation day to see if I think I'm going to have to alter cement shade. So this just comes on and off as the ceramist is working with this. What they'll do is they're trying to give the nuances of the custom characteristics. Then they'll put it on the prep die that represents what it's going to look like in the mouth. They can then check it next to the shade that I chose and say, Oh, it needs to be a little warmer in the gingival third, or it's too bright, or it's too dark. And then they can put custom staining, whether internal or external.
So hopefully that helps for those that aren't using the prep dye. It's actually very affordable. In fact, you can actually give us a call at Keating and, and we can actually get a group rate for you. For those that are using it, make sure you use it properly. You can take a prep shade for each individual tooth because a lot of times they're different. And then photograph that. I hope this was helpful and, and my goal here at Keating is to take your dentistry and our dentistry to an entirely different level. I invite you, if you're ever in the Southern California area, we are in Irvine, about 10 miles from Disneyland, 10 miles, 4 miles from Newport Beach. Give us a call and stop by. I know you would enjoy seeing our great laboratory.